As some of you may know, I have a master's degree in psychology. I only used the degree for that career for a couple years before I jumped into the tech field, but I still enjoy the subject. It occurred to me that in just a few weeks, it will be 2011, the 60th anniversary of the first famous study by a psychologist named Dr. Solomon Ash. You know what his research was about? Well, it's whatever you say his research was about, Zonstar. That's right. His research was about conformity. He did a series of experiments on this over the course of several years, but one of his most famous was one in which several people pretended to be research subjects, but were actually accomplices to the experimenter. And one actual research subject with no idea what was going on was put in the room with them. All of them were trying to determine which line on a piece of paper most closely matched a line on another piece of paper. After the first few questions where they all answered correctly, everyone else in the room that was in on it would start to guess the same wrong answer on purpose, and the real subject would always have to give their answer last to feel the full weight of the conformity pressure. Yes, it was just as you suspected. We are lemmings. The subject would sweat, look very anxious, and show other outward signs of stress at being forced to either conform by giving an answer that they knew was wrong, or give the right answer but not conform. What Dr. Ash found was that a total of 37% of the responses given were conformist, even when they were obviously wrong, and that a staggering 75% of the research subjects would conform by giving the known wrong answer instead of giving the correct answer at least once in a session. If that study were created with the even simpler goal of proving that humans are in fact social animals, I don't think it could have been constructed any better. As it was, it proved that we are very susceptible to the public beliefs of others, even when we can see with our own eyes the actual answer. Now, imagine if you were in this sort of experiment, but that instead of lines on a piece of paper to compare the line you were told about, you had nothing close at hand to compare that line to. You've been told since you were old enough to remember exactly what that line was, and that the foundation of your family and your country was all about that line. You were never encouraged to test whether that line was the length that you would expect, or whether it existed at all, because either scenario would just be unthinkable. Ultimately, without the tools or mindset to test these claims, well, the line becomes whatever those around you tell you it is. Essentially, all religions make claims, often lots of supernatural claims, and everyone has reasons for believing their faith's supernatural claims and not those of other faiths. Of course, if religion were really about finding the particular magic that most appealed to you, and there was no social or cultural baggage tied to your choice of religion, you would statistically expect a lot bigger patchwork of religious preferences. South Dakota should have lots more Hindus. Of course, it's in the best interest of theists not to teach the claims of other religions, or to teach a distorted version of other religions. That's where we atheists come in. The fact that we are now more visible than we were just adds one more voice to the symphony of voices. But we're the only voice that is talking about rigorously measuring all of the claims. And for that, we stand out. We understand, and Dr. Ash proved in part, why people tend to fall for their local creation myth. It also indicates that there would undoubtedly be a lot more atheists around if everyone truly internalized that they had a choice. It may seem obvious to us, but the more we speak up, the easier it is for theists with doubts to decide that it's okay not to believe. This is just one more way that we can break the cycle, and without even breaking a sweat.